What's up? It's me, Haley Jones, and I'm here with Shay Martin. Which, if you've been involved at all with me for a while or Shay Martin, this is like a blast from the past because we used to do Finance Fridays every Friday. Which, spoiler alert, Shay is a loan officer, loan originator, loan officer, loan originator. You can use both interchangeably. <laughs> Go on, and she's both home loan specialist, and she is with MIG, which stands for. Mortgage Investors Group. I was I was about to like be like, oh, it stands for. Her. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So in order to get to know Shay just a little bit better, we have a little bit of rapid fire. So it's gonna be this or that, mostly. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Like ice cream, like everything chocolate, or is there any? dabble of vanilla at all? Oh, that's a tough question. I'm not a huge, huge chocolate person, but if I have ice cream, definitely chocolate over vanilla. Yes. Or um, vanilla with chocolate sauce. Oh. Reading books or watching TV? Reading books. What are you reading? Currently, I'm reading The Women by Kristen Hanna. Her books are really heavy, though, so sometimes I just read Like these. heavy, like intense, like yes. the They're all are like um, historical um, fiction. So that's, oh, yeah. yeah. This one's about Vietnam. Very oh, intense. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get into fiction. I can't, I don't know what it is. I can't remember who was doing what, but anyways. Are you a TV person at all? Yes. What are like, you watching? reality TV binge. I don't like to be stressed out by my TV. I don't think I knew that about you, reality oh, yeah. TV. Okay, That's so probably like, a what? newer thing. Like at the end of the day, I just need to check out. Yeah, you so need a minute. Yeah. Mama needs a minute. <laughs> okay. So anything so... that makes my heart rate rise, I'm not into that right now. So. <laughs> like Bravo reality TV? Yes, pretty like... much all the Bravo. Below Deck, big Below Deck. Are you watching Below Deck mode right now with Maybe it's over. I don't know. But one of the housewives is on there, and she was horrible. We did watch them. Yeah. Yes, watched she was awful. Anyways. So I was out of my husband, because he's really into blow deck, too. <laughs> no, my husband is, too. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a hard time finding reality shows we both like, and so below deck is one that yes. we can... That yeah. was actually... He started it first during COVID. He binge-watched all oh, the below yeah. deck, and okay. I got me into it. I feel like it's a crossover, because there's, like, a boat, and it's, like, guy-appropriate. Yeah. I don't know. Or they feel it's like, like it's okay. Down Abbey, like, below the... <laughs> Yeah, how the other people live. Um, football or basketball? Football. College or NFL? College. UT? Yeah, of course. <laughs> did you go to UT? I did not, actually. I went to Carson oh. Newman. Oh, I knew this because I was reading this about you. I went to Carson Newman. Okay, I think we've made the connection randomly and we always forget that about each other. I know, other. because I was like going back through reading your bio. Like, I know, I feel like I like know Shay. I've worked with Shay a lot. And I was like, Carson Newman? What is this? Wait, are you Carson Newman College or Carson Newman University? I graduated under Carson Newman College. Okay, I did too. Someone else, I, okay, I was at a like career fair at Maryville High a couple weeks ago and the guy had like an Eagles shirt on and I go, Carson Newman? He goes, you were probably college, weren't you? And I was like, well, yeah, that was rude. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir, I was. Okay. And then he goes, well, I get scholarship money because it's called university. And I was like, okay, I have scholarship too, bro. You don't know I me. I really don't know the difference. I don't know. My sister was Carson Newman University, but anyways, I it just sounds better, I guess. Peyton or Dolly? Ooh. Both? Ooh. Peyton and Dolly? Can you pick between Peyton or Dolly? <laughs> it's I'm true decision. Tennessee and I can't pick between Peyton <laughs> or Dolly. You're like, they're both amazing. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Dogs. Do you have a dog? Yes. I want a dog. Akapu? Oh, it's little. He's no. supposed to be little and he's about 35 pounds. <laughs> he's and he's cockapoo. old and now he thinks he's a puppy. Again, so he's oh. driving me crazy. Oh. Um, tea or coffee? Coffee. Favorite snack? Ooh, I love all snacks. The one that comes to mind is Cheez Its and Diet Coke. Oh, that's the first Cheez Its and Diet Coke we've heard. And I, think I, I can't like eat it. Cheez Its without drinking a Diet Coke. It's something. <laughs> they have to go together. <laughs> Cheez Its makes me think of Blakely, like the Spanx. The founder of Spanx, Cheez Its are like her thing. So I'm like, they must be good. Like, or that's you're why destined I'm for greatness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe it's in <a> Mercury. <laughs> okay, let's take a hard one and talk about business. Okay, right. so you are a loan officer. Tell us what really does that mean? So basically, I am a home loan specialist, home loan originator. I am the person that will help you get the home financing. When you are ready to work with Haley and buy a home, I can help you find it. So what is your most common, like, or what, what are like, would you say are the bare minimum things people have to have to get a home? To get a home loan? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the big things that we look at obviously is credit score, credit history, employment and income. So you don't necessarily have to be employed if you have fixed income, but what is your employment and income and then assets. So do you have any money for down payment? What's your savings history? Things like that. So credit, income, assets, those are the big things that go into home loan. So when it comes to income, this, 
what counts as income? Because I feel like this has come up a lot with my own clients where like certain things count or don't count. So what is, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, more things count than don't count. Yeah. So give me a little bit more specific. So example. for example, if I'm doing like, I've got two jobs and they're both the same. One's another state. Like I'm remotely working. <laughs> I'm remotely working from one state. I live in Tennessee, but only my Tennessee income is counting towards my pre-approval amount. So that's very layered. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's the two job yeah. thing. So yeah. you, to be able to count income from two different jobs, you have to have had two jobs for two years. Okay. So secondary employment, secondary income is a little bit different because the big thing with that is they want to see that you can hold two jobs and one doesn't suffer. So like if you have a main 40 oh, hour right. job and you have a side job, does the side job. So anytime we're counting income from two jobs, you have to have a two year history of that. So that's the one thing on two jobs. Working remotely, as long as your employer verifies that you're able to live and work anywhere, then you can, your employer can be based out of California and you can live in Tennessee, but that's really just down to your employment verification and if they verify that you can work okay. remote. And so then, we could use the remote yeah. work there, but it's that one probably came down to more second. Got secondary. it, that makes sense. What about like commission-based income? How does that work? Typically, the general rule of thumb, any income that varies, so kind of the second job too, but commission income, anything that can vary, we want to see a two-year history with that because it's variable, it's not fixed, it's not guaranteed. So we want to see highs and lows and average that out. So general rule of thumb, two-year history on commission income. However, sometimes we can go with a one year. It depends on the loan program and the underwriting guidelines. Sometimes we can get by with one year. It also kind of goes back to, are you, have you historically been in this line of work? Mm -hmm. the, the situation just has to make sense, but we do have to have a history of it. So if you are starting a brand new job, first time being commissioned, unfortunately we're not going to be able to use that. Anymore. Yeah. So what about entrepreneurs like who have their own business or are starting a business and they've maybe made money, but maybe like their tax, their like tax return doesn't show, like, how does that work for entrepreneurs? Like what's your advice there? So again, variable income, self-employment isn't guaranteed. So typically we want to see a historical average of that. Typically with self-employment, they want you to be self-employed for two years on tax returns. So we do need to look at two years worth of tax returns of income. So if you started, but you don't necessarily have that on a tax return, we want to actually see the income on a tax return. With self-employment, I always say we can go only go off what you tell the government. Yeah. So as far as qualifying for your traditional, conventional, Fannie, Freddie, any type of traditional loan, they're going to go off tax returns. And so they're going to go off what you show on your tax returns. However, there are loan programs that are, you know, not your standard loan mm -hmm. options that will be called like a bank statement loan. So they could look at 24 months worth of bank statements and average that out. But those get into kind of your non-traditional type of financing. So okay. it's not a complete hard no, but you have to kind of get a little bit more creative. And would you say like on the non-traditional side, typically like those are higher interest rates or like... Typically. So with those, you're looking at, again, not your traditional conventional Fannie Freddie loan where the rates are kind of more standardized. You're looking at a specific investor that's willing to take that loan. Mm -hmm. So that investor sets their rates. They're a higher risk. Interest rates are driven by risk. So since it's a little bit higher risk, those are going to come with a little bit higher of an interest rate, typically. Got it. So I'm thinking I want to buy a house, but I'm not pre-approved. What do I need to do? Like what happens? Do I need to have all my documents ready? Like what do I need to do? Yeah. So first step, you know, I'm biased. I always think the first step should be the pre-approval before they even call you. I think they should have talked to a lender. I but agree again, with her. I'm very, but... very biased in that. <laughs> but typically you're, they're going to call you first and say, hey, we're mm -hmm. interested. And you're going to say, well, what's your pre-approval status? Have them call a lender. Either call me, call someone that you've been referred to, but talk to a trusted lender. And that's one thing about MIG. We're local, we're trusted. So call a trusted lender. It's really just a conversation. Start that conversation with the lender. We're going to talk through what's your specifics about credit, you know, any credit challenges, talk through your employment history, um, gather your information as far as, you know, that conversation information, and then we'll build what we need from you to get that pre-approval started. Um, so after that conversation, we would move forward with a little bit more official pre-approval, the credit check, verifying income, employment, depending on if you are self-employed, like we talked about, we might need some more documents, things like that from you up front. But really just, it starts with that conversation and, you know, figuring out what your goals and expectations, and then we can go from there. Right. So how do you know, like, if a lender is a fit for you? Like, what would you suggest to people? Like, how would they know, like, who to go with or what to do? Like, is it all about the bottom dollar rate? Is it about, like, who you work well with? Like, what's your suggestion for people who are trying to find a lender? 
That's a great question. I think that, you know, working with someone that you can actually get on the phone, that would probably be something that's, can you get them on the phone when you need them? In this day and age, things happen at night, things happen on weekends. You know, not saying everybody's available 24 seven, but having someone that you can connect with, can find, you know, they're not just an entity. I value the personal relationship. I value building that, just like you build those relationships out viewing homes and talking to your clients. I think it's a very similar thing. I, I view it a very much as a relationship. And so I personally want to work with people that I have that relationship with, can build a relationship with and trust in that sense. Yes, rate matters, obviously. You know, you're gonna wanna get a good deal and I'm gonna be the first to tell someone, even if I've built that relationship, if they can get a much better deal elsewhere, I'll let them know that. But I think that's having somebody that you've built that relationship with, you can trust. Because going back to the pre-approval, a pre-approval is only as good as the loan officer. So anybody can issue a pre-approval, but if they don't know what they're doing, then that pre-approval might not be worth anything when you actually get under contract and get into underwriting. So it's really just someone who's experienced, who knows what they're doing, and you can trust them and you have that relationship built. So when it comes to getting a pre-approval, and if you are looking at different lenders, can you talk to different people, have your credit ding like what does that look like without being like grossly put in a bad position from a credit yeah score of course so the cfpb the consumer financial protection bureau has put in place the ability to shop for financing in general so same thing as when you go to buy a car they're going to run your credit through probably 10 different auto financing companies and it's not going to hurt you the same thing happens with a mortgage when you're shopping for a mortgage so multiple lenders can check your credit the general rule of thumb they say is within 30 days i tell people kind of within a two-week time span for it to all count as the same industry checking your credit so yes multiple people can check your credit one nice thing about mig is we do offer a soft pull credit option which is not going to be a hard pull it's not going to ding your credit so that is something I kind of tell people it's a no harm pre-approval. Mm -hmm. So in the pre-approval stage, we can offer that soft pull as well. So that's something that helps people quite a bit. And just as a side note, which we're kind of taking as an assumption, the whole reason for a pre-approval is so you know like what you can buy, yes. what's your budget. And just because you, like I have a lot of clients that maybe they're pre-approved for a certain amount, but they're not comfortable at your monthly payment rate. So that's another thing when you're talking to a lender is, yeah, the overall amount, but then also talking with your lender about what does your monthly payment look like and are you okay with what that would be? Right. That's a very good point. So in my initial conversation I have with people, two questions I ask, what's your payment comfort zone and what's your price range comfort zone? And do those two things match each mm -hmm. other? And that's the one of the most important parts. Obviously, we have to make sure that you qualify. We have to make sure you're comfortable with it because you don't want to buy above you know, what you're comfortable with and then say, you know, like right now, rates are a little bit higher. We're all hoping rates are going to drop, but if they don't drop in the next mm -hmm. year or two, you have to be comfortable with that payment right. for a while. So that's, you know, again, part of the pre-approval is talking through and making sure you're qualified, but also just making sure you're comfortable. Right. So now that you brought up the R word, rates, um, do you think, what's your thoughts on what we're going to see the rest of, at the making of this video, this is May, 2024. So what are your thoughts? Because, you know, at the beginning of the year, it was like, oh, they're going to go down in March or whatever. Well, well, we've not seen that. So what are your predictions, thoughts, guesstimations? I think everybody stopped trying to predict this. January, everyone predicted rates were going to be in the fives by 2025. I don't foresee that we're going to actually be there now, but the Fed has come out and pretty much put a pause or a halt for on the feelings that there's going to be any more hikes. So I think we'll stay where we are for now. It's really all just based on employment and inflation data. So it's really just, we're watching that inflation very closely to see what happens with rates. Hoping that we still see a drop, but obviously it's an election year. There's, you know, the reports, the data aren't really indicating that rates need to drop anytime soon. Yeah. So, so when you, when people are like, I'm gonna wait for rates to drop, like what's your, I guess for my personal philosophy is like, I don't think you should, really tie in the market because you never know. Like, I think you need to make the decision about when is best for you in, in your situation. So I don't know, you know, when people are saying that they're going to wait for rates to drop, it's like, well, we have no idea when that could be. So what are your thoughts or advice on that kind of perspective? So you have to be comfortable with where rates are, where the payment is. I personally, I've, I've seen it out there several times now. My kind of thing is marry the house, date the rate. So if you find the house that you love and you can get it, get it and if you're comfortable with it you know where that payment is hopefully temporarily get into that house that you love and you can refinance in the future and get a more comfortable rate for the long term um, again you just have to be comfortable with where the rates are and where that payment is now as we experienced two three years ago rates were 
3% and it was almost nearly impossible to get under contract on a house. So my assumption is that rates drop again, the market gets flooded again with people who are like comfortable getting back in. And it's once again, you're gonna be making multiple offers. It's gonna be, not that we're not necessarily in that situation now with multiple offers, but I think it's gonna be a lot more stressful if rates do drop. So I, I always think it's a great time to buy in the sense that you're investing in yourself, you're investing, you know, versus renting or anything like that. But, you know, definitely start that conversation and make sure you are comfortable with it. It's, it's a hard decision. Well, and two, I will also say, this is where, you know, some people don't know where they are in their situation, which is why I think it's good to go ahead and talk with a lender, just to get an idea of like where you are. Um, Cause then once you know where you are, you know, like, does this work for me now? Do I need to be working towards getting pre-approved? Like, where am I now? So that's just a side note to all that. So when it comes to, when you think about how the market's been just in the East Tennessee area, COVID, March 2020-ish to now, when you think about the market and kind of the, you know, what's happened with mortgages and all that, do you think like East Tennessee is back to normal? Like what, what's your thoughts on that? In terms of just like consumers being involved. I mean, do you think everyone is kind of like, okay, rates are fine. Like we're ready to move now because I feel like in 2020, three people kind of froze yeah. a little bit. I definitely think everybody got a little bit nervous last year. There was a lot of uncertainty. Um, the thing is East Tennessee is being flooded with an influx of people. Mm -hmm. So this is a very desirable place to live. People want to be in East Tennessee. That means home values are going to continue to go up. Mm -hmm. So this is just a great, great area, great market to buy in. Your home is always going to appreciate here. They always, but now what we've seen is it's going to appreciate. People want to live here. I think the East Tennessee market, while it has slowed down some, I mean, we have been pretty consistent versus yeah. you know, some other markets. So, and I definitely think just chatter around the office, it's definitely picking back up again. Yeah. Okay. Anything about like mortgages, loans, something I didn't ask that you're like, Haley, you didn't ask that. We should have asked that. I think one of the big things that's exciting about the mortgage industry now is because of where we are with rates and prices, it has really encouraged lenders and more at like the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA level to increase increase pathways to home ownership. So obviously we have an affordability crisis with prices going up and rates going up. And so they've really opened a lot of doors to make homes more affordable. So it can be challenging with things costing a little bit more, but there's a lot of great programs for low down payments, low income categories. There's a lot of great options to not close all the doors to home ownership, even though things have gotten a little bit more expensive. So that's one thing that I just love about this industry is there's always, you know, where is there a need? How can we fix that need? And what are some programs that can meet those needs? And we're at MIG, we're on the forefront of all of that. So we are on the boards to all of these, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and we have all of these programs up front. And so don't let down payment, different things like that be a hindrance to even starting that conversation because there's so many great options that you might not even be aware of that could help get you into the house. So, and are those at the national level, at the Tennessee level, like kind of, you know, what does that look like? For example, down payment. Assistance. Yeah, so, so there's national programs. Tennessee has a Tennessee Housing Development Agency, which MIG is the number one lender since basically they started keeping track back like 2003, I think was the first year they started ranking. And THCA is a great option. It's typically geared towards first time home buyers, but again, they've evolved their program. So they have options, not just for first time home buyers. Um, they offer down payment and closing cost assistance. They offer discounted rates to veterans, firefighters, other service members. So they're, they're a great program that's just eligible for the state of Tennessee. But again, there's national programs for 100% financing or other forms of down payment and closing cost assistance. And that's something else I just want to encourage. Like when you talk with your lender, just spill the tea, if you will. Say all the things. Like they are there to help you on your current situation. Say what you need to say. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I love that space. when I'm talking to somebody and they're like, sorry, I'm just rambling. I'm like, no, I love it. And I'm just sitting there <laughs> taking yeah. notes because that helps me really understand where someone is in their journey and their process and what they're looking for. Um, I mean, I'm going to ask those questions to prompt you up front, but it really is helpful if you really just lay it all out on the table and then we can really build your scenario and fit you into the best program that's available for yeah. you. For it's a puzzle sure. basically and kind of fit yeah. you the right puzzle for you. Yeah. And everyone's situation is different. So just also remember that, that like, you know, I have some clients right now, they're like, well, our friends, their rates are 3%. And it's like, well, we're happy for them, <laughs> but like, we don't have that. Let's take a hard right turn. Okay. So we mentioned it a little bit, Knoxville, East Tennessee area. So 
What are, and you've got little children. How old are they? I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. Littles. Yeah. I'm like, We're in the thick of it right <laughs> You're like, hello. Okay, so what are some of your favorite things to do with them locally, like in the area? Well, with a one-year-old, it's a little bit, we, our four-year-old, we obviously love Dollywood. We love all the parks. Lake Shores, we're there every single weekend right now with t-ball, baseball, all oh, the yeah. things. And they're doing so much to renovate that park. It's going to be amazing yes. when all of that is completed. Um, hopefully they can fix the parking situation, but this is bad. Yeah, that's been an issue for spring ball this year. But yes, we love Lakeshore. We're there a lot. Really, anytime we can get outside, we love it. So parks, restaurants that have outdoor areas for kids. So Corner 16, we love. Oh, they there. have a great outdoor yes. space. So yes. I wish there were more of those. Yeah. Investors, entrepreneurs, anyone want to open something <laughs> like that? That would be great. She's got an idea yeah. for you. Okay, what are your top brunch places? You're a brunch person, yes? I I love brunch. I wish I could eat brunch more. <laughs> So where would you tell people like you got to try brunch here? Maybe three, four places. So again, it gets a little bit challenging with little kids. Yes. Um, if I'm doing an adult brunch, <laughs> we love like Stir. It's a great yes. new brunch place. If we're doing like breakfast, we because obviously we're up early, our days start early, so we don't really make it till 10 a.m. brunch. Breakfast, Holly's Gourmet Market is probably one of our favorite places. So and then Scramble Jakes is in our basically in our neighborhood. So yeah, scr well Scramble Jakes is good. I feel like you got to prep, you got to prepare, or get on the list or something. Yeah, we went the other day and we were there at like 8 a.m. So if you're we're early like, risers, we, are <laughs> we got right in. Have you been to Aretha Frankenstein's? Not yet. Oh my gosh. I think you gotta several go. people have sent me. Those I live vicariously like through all your Oh my emails, gosh, so. the pancakes. What about dinner places? So one of my favorite go-to places, which I call it, still call it La Paz, even though it's not called that anymore, but Shake Over there. So that's probably one of our go-to favorite. Um, and would you say it's, it's like Mexican? Yeah, it's Mexican. Yeah. Best margarita in town. So that's usually our go-to. I'm trying to think of other places. Downtown, Vita is our favorite. JC Holdway has always really a great menu. You know what's funny is I used to work with her husband like back in the day. He's a teacher. And he mentioned JC Holdway like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I've never even heard about JC Holdway. Like and he way was back like, in the day? Yeah, this has been years. And every time so they've I taken him off the menu and every time we're there, he tells the chef he needs to put him back on. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's shameless about the Brussels I just Brussels remember sprouts. being like in the teacher workroom and he was like talking about these Brussels sprouts and I was like, I mean, such an imp he still talks about them that much. That's so funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, well, where are you from? So I was born in Florida, but I've lived in, my parents still live in the same house that they moved into when I was 11 months old. Oh, so wow. I've lived in Knoxville okay. my entire life. Yeah. So when people are like thinking about Knoxville to come here to move here, what would be some of your suggestions on places that they should check out or go look at? Because we have a lot of people that are like, we like the idea of it, but they're not even really sure where to go, what to look at. So yeah. what would you tell them? Oh, that's a hard question because obviously I'm biased. I've lived here my entire life and I have, I think, always taken Knoxville for granted. Just yeah. where, how you can get to the lakes and the mountains and everything. I think what fits your feel, what's your vibe. There's so many just great little areas of Knoxville and it's hard if you're not from here to kind of know those. But like South Knoxville is mm -hmm. great. North Knoxville is great. It really just depends what you're looking for. Are you, you are you mostly concerned about schools? Are you mostly, you know, what are your cons concerns? You can even live just outside of Knox County, but be central yeah, kind of to everything. Right. So that's a tough one if you're trying to move here without really knowing the area because it's kind of figuring out your vibe and really what's important to you. But there's, because there's really anywhere you could live. It's great. Now this might be too personal, but are you within the city limits? Or are you county only? We are like right outside the city limits. So we're in Rocky. So trash service, this has become a thing, which I didn't ever think was a thing because like we're from here. Yeah. But do you haul your trash or do you pay for a trash service? We pay for trash service. Right. <laughs> we know my husband. We don't haul trash. <laughs> Called out. No, that's funny yeah. actually. Okay. Well, I just bring that up because people are always shocked. Like what? And I'm like, yeah. And then you, do you have, do you use Rural Metro for your? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't think so. You, well, you, it's a, it's not a membership, but you it's buy a subscription. It. It's a yeah. subscription. That's been a recent, very recent, like big deal for a lot of different people. So I just wanted to. So we, yeah. we lived in the city for like ten minutes and recently, or ten years, and recently <laughs> moved to the county within the last few years. And so that was a big adjustment. Oh, yeah. we now have to shop for trash. We now have <laughs> to shop for fire. We, have, you know, so it is. I sometimes miss the perks of living in the city. Yeah. Everyone complains about city taxes, but it comes with all yeah. the perks. Let's wrap it up. If people want to get in touch with you, where should they go? What should they do? 
something in Yeah, so you can always give me a call. My cell phone, 865-806-9101. Email is great, shay.martin at migonline.com, or you can go to my website, www.shaymartin.com. Boom, those are all easy right yeah. there. And you know she's accessible. She actually is accessible all the time. Yeah, I always tell people, text me, call me. We'll connect. We'll figure out a time that works for you. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, no anything that we me. missed? Did we miss anything? We I think we covered a lot. But uh, yeah, if there's anything that we've touched on that anyone has questions about, yeah. reach out to either one of us. Yes. Awesome. We're, cool. We could talk about this all day. If you've ever <laughs> watched our Finance Fridays, we tend to read They go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Haley. Right. Bye.